Hello folks, Jason Cressman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. In today's video, I want to discuss honeycomb and brew comb and some different scenarios. I had one fellow write in and say, hey, why are my bees building some wonky, crazy shaped comb? How can I keep them from doing that? And I'm going to share that trick in today's video. But before we go on any further, I'd like to encourage all of you, whether it's your first time here or your 500th time, please take a second to subscribe and then click on that little bell so you can be notified when new videos come out. I'd also like to encourage you to hang around for the big announcement at the end of this video. So now let's see if I can teach you anything about honeycomb or brood comb. Let's go. So what I've got here in front of me is a freshly extracted honeycomb frame. Notice how light the comb is. Now this is a pretty new build for the bees. Now if we compare it to a brood comb, you're going to notice a big difference. I might even have to move the frame in a little bit for you to actually see the comb itself because it's so dark. And we put them side by side, you can see the obvious difference. Now there's a lot of things that can contribute to the darkening of the comb. For one, this is used year round, as where this is only used during the growing season when there's a nectar flow. You got to consider all of the footprints that are walking around on this too. Out and about, out and about. I know my wife gets on me after a couple times of going in and out with my boots on. And you've got thousands of bees going in and out and they're not taking their boots off. So look what happens. You've also got to consider that as each bee is raised, they shed a cocoon in each cell. So that adds some darkening to the comb too. So what you're looking at here is a piece of plastic foundation. And when I say foundation, let me explain what that, what, what that is. What that is, is these are called frames. Um, all hives have frames. And the frame is just the wooden shell. It's the frame that goes around the foundation, which is here in the middle. Now this is the sheet of foundation, and over here you can see the bees have drawn it out in the comb. Now let me move it in a little closer. You might notice this piece of plastic foundation, this stuff here, in the background here if you look really closely at the bottom. You're also going to notice that I've got the corners punched out. And what that acts as is a passage for the bees to go from this side of the frame, they can cut through, and they can come out over here. Or if you have several of these frames with the plastic foundation and you cut all of the corners out, they're able to pass through there and go several frames over if they would like. So it makes it easier for the bees to get from one side of the frame over to the other or maybe even a couple frames over by knocking them corners off. And that's really simply done. If you look at this plastic foundation, it actually has a perforated corner and all you gotta do is simply bend it and it snaps right off. Do I do this with all of my sheets of foundation? No, but ordinarily I do have a handful without the corners in each colony. Um, myself, I prefer the plastic foundation over the wax foundation, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. Now the reason I like this plastic foundation is after the bees have drawn it in the comb, like you see here, um, after a few years, it starts to get dark colored like this frame here. Um, it'll even actually get to where it's completely black. Um, this frame here I don't consider to be in bad shape. And then after maybe three, maybe five years, you want to um, remove all the old comb because after a period of time, um, the cocoons in these cells um, make the cells smaller. And what that does over a period of time is create a smaller bee. Any pathogens or um, pesticides any of that, any chemicals can be absorbed by honeycomb. So it's another reason you might want to recycle out some of your old comb. Well, that's really easy to do with the plastic foundation. You simply take your hive tool, scrape this wax comb off, clear down to the plastic, and then you can um, power wash it. Or I've even taken a wire wheel on a drill and cleaned up the foundation after the bulk of the wax was off. And then you can simply recoat this plastic foundation with either um, a roller and some hot beeswax, um, a paintbrush, or a simple wax crayon, which I did a video on a few years ago. And basically all I did was took a toilet paper roll, 
melted some wax, filled it up the toilet paper roll. Once it dried, I had a giant crayon. And with that giant crayon, you're able to rub on the beeswax right out in the bee yard. Now, recently, um, Cayman Reynolds did a video on the wax crayon, um, bringing the light back on it, which was kind of cool. Um, and he pointed out that he noticed that it does a better job when it's slightly warm. So keep that in mind if you're recoating some plastic foundation. Really good stuff. Um, I do want to point out that all plastic foundation, all foundation period, is not the same. Um, only buy from credible dealers. Um, to throw out a few names, um, Premier, um, Right Cell, Acorn makes some excellent foundation. And a lot of these places will offer um, thick coatings, two coatings, three coatings of wax. And I'll explain a little bit more later about the coating of wax and why that matters. So here what we have is a piece of wax foundation. And it's, it's not very thick at all. You can see it's very flimsy. Um, I don't want to bend it too much and break it. Um, embedded down in the wax, and when I say embedded, um, there's, there's a wire, and it's actually right in the middle of the sheet of wax. And these little metal hangers here help to hold it into the frame um, and keep it in place and keep it straight and square. Now, bees accept wax foundation really, really well. Um, the downside to the wax foundation is it's not reusable. So once you get to where you've got old comb and you're ready to recycle it out, you would simply just cut out all the way around and pop in a new piece of foundation. So those are your options. You got plastic foundation, you got wax foundation, and I wanna throw one more at you here. What we have here is a wedge topped frame. And what I mean by that, up in here, there is actually a wedge, and I don't know how well the camera is gonna pick that up, but there's a wedge up in here. And you take and paint some wax on that wedge, and the bees will actually draw comb down off of that. Now, what I encourage, if you're gonna do this, is to run some fishing line through these holes on the side of the frame, across to the other side, and zigzag some fishing line through here, and get it tight. And what that will do is, as the bees draw the comb down, they'll actually embed that fishing line right in the center and it'll give the comb a lot more strength. Now, the downside to um, going all natural and letting the bees draw out their foundation is, is even with the fishing line in there, it can still be rather delicate on super hot days. So on days where you would pull out the frames and, and flip them around like crazy, that comb may start to bow or even fall out. So these are nice to have. And one advantage to giving the bees this is that they can draw what they want. Um, and when I say that, what we're looking at here is a frame of all worker cells. All of these holes are the size of a worker bee. Now, those are all female bees, worker bees. The male bees, the drones, they have bigger holes or bigger cells. And when we give our bees a foundation that has already been laid out for workers, we're not really given a chance for drones to populate our colony. So by giving them one of these frames, they're able to draw out whatever they want. Maybe they want worker over here and drone over here. Maybe they want the whole thing to be drone cells. Now, one advantage to having a frame that has drone cells in it, um, besides the fact that they can raise drones, is that those drone cells actually hold more nectar or honey than a worker cell. So just a little interesting fact there. So now what I would like to do is um, let's hop in on my computer where I've got some more pictures of frames and I would like to go through this a little bit more in depth. So let's move inside. There's two reasons 
for wonky comb and a beehive. And I'm going to discuss both of those right now. The very first one happens when you have plastic foundation. And it's usually when you have plastic foundation that it has very, very little wax coating on that foundation. And that's the reason the bees just do not want to draw it out. If you look at this frame right here, you're going to notice that the bees actually drew the comb out away from the foundation. The bees can actually walk behind that and work the back side of it. That is definitely not what we want. That comb needed to be all scraped off and that foundation needs a good quality coating of beeswax. Now, if you're somebody that likes to um, do little projects like this on your own, by scraping that off there, you're gonna get your first good start to melting some beeswax to get this project started. Now, um, when it comes to coating your, your foundation, you don't wanna put it on too heavy. You may have seen my note earlier, um, when you're coating foundation, you wanna work on coating the upper edges of the foundation. Now, if you look at this picture and if you look at the foundation that's closest to the bottom of the screen, you're gonna notice that the raised edges of the cells are what I am trying to concentrate getting the wax on. Now, on the one side of your screen, you're gonna notice that some of the cells actually got filled in with wax. Is that a problem? No, because the bees can remove the excess wax and put it where they want. But it's not your goal to fill up those cells with wax. The only thing you're trying to get a nice wax coating on is them raised edges of the hexagon. So what we're looking at here is some frames that I've recoded. And you're gonna notice um, how quick, um, when there's a good nectar flow, bees can draw out plastic foundation when it has a good quality coating of wax on it. The second thing that can cause wonky comb in a beehive is bee space. And this is critical, folks. This is a major, this doesn't matter if you're using plastic foundation or wax foundation, or if you're foundationless. If you do not respect bee space, the bees are gonna do something that you do not intentionally want them to do. A few years back, I bought some queens, I went to install them, so what I do? If you look closely towards the center of the box, you're gonna notice a gap. And in that gap is where I stuck that queen cage. And because I left that gap in there and this colony was so healthy and I did not respect bee space, well, the bees took advantage of that. And this is what I returned to a few days later. Notice the extra pieces of comb attached to the comb on the frame. They're sticking out off of the side. Well, it's because I left too much space between the frames. Here's another scenario. Came out of winter a couple years ago. I left my feeding shim on top of the colony. This is the side where I had dry sugar at one time. There was paper over there. Well, what happened is I didn't get to the colony to inspect in time. The bees removed all of the paper and they decided to build comb up there. Well, that comb, they attached to the inner cover lid, as you can see, and I had to clean up that mess and go ahead and get that feeding shim off of there. That was a fun little project. So you got to respect bee space. Now here's another one. Um, caught a small swarm, threw two frames in a box, shook the bees in there, thought, you know, I'll come back in a few days and throw in some more frames. Well, guess what? Life got busy, I forgot, and when I come back a week later, this is what I find. Two frames in a box, whole bunch of space. I'm not respecting bee space at all. So the bees decided, well, we'll build the comb how we want it and where we want it. So I had to cut that out off of that um, lid and I had to rubber band it into a frame. And then I gave it back to the colony, of course. So this just shows how you want to keep your frames close together 
tight, tight, tight. You see these little spacers that keep the frames from going all the way together? Those are actually part of the end bar on the frames. You can see how it sticks up a little bit here. If you look at the side of the frame here, it's narrow down at the bottom and gets wider as it comes up. And that's what creates the B space between frames. That's what makes these frames removable, is B space. It's very critical that we respect B space. Now the one thing that I've noticed over the years is some of the local farm stores that sell frames, um, their frames do not allow for B space. So I'm gonna overlap a picture here, and these are the frames from Royal King. Notice how the end bars are not wider at the top. Well, I find this concerning because what happens is new beekeepers, they buy these frames thinking, you know, they're on the right path to get started. And what happens is, is the bees glue the frames together. The frames are harder to get out. They, it just creates more obstacles for the beginning beekeeper to have to battle. And that's what frustrates me the most, I guess. I'm going to notice by looking at this picture that there's some comb drone on top of those frames and that's that's what we call burr comb but that burr comb can lead to the next problem that we're going to discuss and that is bridging and that's exactly what was going on in this box um, and the reason for that is is every manufacturer has different specifications they go f with when they build their boxes or their equipment and not all of those respect bee space the way every individual beekeeper would like them to. This is a Hoover box right here that you're looking at. I love my Hoover boxes. Um, they make great equipment. It's held up very, very well for me. It's a, it's a very solid box and I've had it going on three years now and it still looks just as new as the day I got it just because of the wax coating on the outside of the box. The issue I have with the Hoover box is from the top of the frames to the very top edge of the box, there's too much space there. The reason they did that is, is so when you lay your inner cover on, it allows bee space between the inner cover and the top of the frames. The bees are able to come up over the top of the frames and circle back down if they want to, or if they want, they can hang out on the top of those frames. Well, the problem is, is when you set another box on there, now that space has doubled from the frames in the bottom box to the frames in the top box. So what bees tend to like to do is build excess burr comb or what's referred to as bridge comb, which connects the bottom frames to the top frames. It's not really a big problem unless you get a colony that wants to do it a lot. And that can happen if you get a very strong nectar flow. So there is no set standard with bee space from manufacturer to manufacturer. For the most part, they all have pretty much the same specs that they go by, but there's some, and it varies between them, um, that the measurements are slightly different, and Hoover um, Bee Equipment is one of them. Now, if we look at this frame here, you're gonna notice um, the comb on the very bottom edge of the frame. This is um, what I would call bridging and they're trying to connect the comb or let it hang down far enough that the bees can grab it from the floor of the hive as they walk in. Um, what they're trying to tell me is, is there's too much distance, I guess, from the floor of the hive up to that frame and they're not able to reach it. So the bees are drawing that down. Now, if we look, you're gonna notice um, the hive behind it is an Apame beehive. And I've noticed this um, bridging with any wooden frames that I've used in these boxes. Now they do not do it with the Apame Pro frames, which are those plastic frames you can see in the background there. Um, but with the wood frames, there must be a difference in the overall height of the frame. And therefore the wood frames are lacking and the bees are trying to make up the difference. So that is bridging, and the only way that you're really going to cut down on bridging is to maybe look at your, your um, equipment. See how much space is provided from the top of the frames 
to the top of the box. And then maybe go ahead and set you another box on top of there and measure from the top of the frames in the bottom box to the bottom of the frames and the top box. And if you've got something that's three quarters of an inch, you're probably going to be all right. If you've got something that's an inch or over, your bees are probably going to build some uh, crazy bird comb and start bridging things together. Now, as far as any bridging between the frames, that happens when you do not have the frames tight together. So respect your bee space and um, you will notice a big difference on burr comb and bridging and um, that's what you want to do. But the only way you're going to eliminate it completely is to take a look at your equipment and say, hey, maybe I can hand plane this top edge down a little bit so there's not so much space up there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's why they do it. When someone asked me about fixing wonky comb, and this turned into a video, I made a post on the YouTube community tab. And I asked everybody if they had any other scenarios regarding comb or foundation that I could include in this video. And I didn't realize until I started to put this video together how long it was going to be. So I think we're going to make this a two-part video and we'll finish up next week. I think that'll make it a little easier um, to break it down into sections for everybody. Um, not everybody's going to want to see what's in part one and not everybody's going to want to see what's in part two. So what I'll do is in the video description, I'll list what is included in each video. I think that'll make it a little bit easier for everybody. So I can finally let the cat out of the bag. I've kept my mouth shut for a long time now. Well, with the exception of telling my Patreons a few weeks ago. Um, now I'm going to get to tell you all and I'm very excited about it. Now you all know we're waiting on my book to finally get through illustration and, and um, get finished up so that it's on the market for everybody to check out and enjoy and I think it's going to help a lot of people out. Um, but we're not quite there yet. So I've also been working on another project and I think this is going to be huge for everybody that wants to participate. What I've done is I've created a new community and it's called the Beekeeping Blueprint. Now what this is going to do is it's going to offer you a place to go and ask questions, share pictures with your questions, maybe give you a place to, um, maybe you don't have questions, maybe you just want to, you're proud of something and you want to share it with the group and, and see what their thoughts are. This is going to be that place, folks. I know over the years of beekeeping, I've talked to several beekeepers that they're out in the, a royal area, they live out in the sticks. Um, they don't have anybody close that keeps bees. They don't have anybody to mentor them. They don't even, they're not even part of a beekeeping group just because it's not in their area. These folks rely on beekeeping books and videos and different things of that sort to get their information. And when it comes time um, that they have questions, maybe they're in a situation and they're trying to figure out how to fix it, they don't have anything to fall back on except for them books and videos. So. For somebody in this situation, this new community is going to be huge. Um, you're going to get my insight on any of your questions, of course, and then you'll have several other people to chime in and share what they think. This new community is through an app called Circle, and you can go to the Android um, store and download the app if you have an Android. If you have uh, an iPhone, you can go over to the Apple Store and download the Circle app there, and then you can go right to the Beekeeping Blueprint community and share away, folks. And what that'll do is put us all connected all the time. Any questions we have, you're going to have somebody to answer it. If you got something you want to share with everybody, you're going to have a place to do it. Now, this new community is set up a little bit like Facebook. Um, and when I say that, I mean you have the option to put pictures. Um, comment, share posts, all of that, but you're not going to have the noise and the ads that you have on Facebook. This would be a lot quieter space and um, I think it's going to be a place where we can all connect a little bit more and learn a little bit more about each other and I'd really love to see you all over there. So what I've done, um, this is a subscription based community, um, so just to make it a little bit easier for everybody to see if this is something that will work for them. I've created a coupon code that's going to give you 50% off your first month. So for a whopping $4.50, you can have 30 days over there, come over, um, share some pictures. Um, there's even a place where you can tell us a little bit about yourself, and I strongly encourage everybody to do that. And then um, 
There's a place where you can go over and show and tell and share your honey harvest, share your bees. Tell us all about it. About it. How, how are your bees doing this year? As the beekeeping blueprint community grows, I do have big plans. Um, one of those plans is to do some live streaming and I'm very excited about actually getting the ball rolling on that. Um, so yeah, I invite you all over there to check it out. This is gonna open up a new world of opportunities for all of us. So um, if you get a minute, um, if you're inclined, please go over and check it out. There's a link down in the video description. Make sure you use the coupon code and you'll get 50% off. I think it's gonna be real fun. I think it's gonna be a, a, a big help for people that don't have a source to fall back on. And um, I'm just, I'm really excited to see um, where it goes, folks. So if you would, check it out. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch the video. And I know there's probably a few of you out there that are curious about my shirt now that you've seen it. And yes, it does have ladybug and moose but let me remove my microphone here and you can read it what it says is dear dad thank you for being our dad if we had a different dad we'd bite him on the butt and go find you love moose and ladybug wife got me that for father's day um Anyway, have a good week, folks, and uh, we'll finish up on this comb and foundation um, video next week. Hope it's been uh, educational for you. Thanks.